The course kit includes some pre-cut plywood parts you might find useful for prototyping structures. Let's take a look. These were fabricated using the ID8 laser cutters early in the summer. The first thing to note is this was highly speculative. I designed these parts without any specific machine in mind, just based upon my general experience from seeing other machines built, and included features I, th I thought might find useful. That said, they're provided kind of as is for you to just try to make use of. There's going to be mistakes, they're not going to be perfect for what you need, but they are a kind of stopgap to provide some structure for those of you who don't have a laser cutter and maybe a faster way to prototype than just doing everything in cardboard. The first thing to note is this guy in the course kit visual guide, if you scroll to the bottom, there is a visual guide that corresponds to this current layout. So that's the best reference for coming back to this. Also, the CAD files for these uh, parts are on the Fusion 360 course area. So if you need to find the actual critical dimensions of things or to copy and duplicate the parts, um, they can be found in the course resources. So let's look at a couple specific cases that might give you some, some ideas. Uh, first is the Arduino plate has a hole pattern designed to uh, accept an Arduino on the, on, the, on the face of it. So uh, this might be useful in conjunction with these nylon screws that can go through without making electrical contact with the board. Um, that could be a way to get uh, an Arduino mounted. Um, the holes are probably not the right exact size. They're a little loose there. You might end up having to just glue the screws in place. Uh, ideally, those would be fit a little more tightly, and uh, uh, you would, wouldn't need to have uh, M3 nuts to match this. But that actually is a sort of base plate that could be used for an Arduino mounting and has other holes and slots and things for attaching other parts. One slot that might be immediately useful is there's the next part over is a, is a servo mounting plate. I can show you here how one of the hobby, one of the micro servos from the kit can be inserted into that central hole. The, the holes right adjacent to the server are sized for a uh, sort of tight fit on the screws that come with the servo. They'll cut into the wood and self-thread. Um, so that could permanently mount a hobby servo uh, on a plate with some other features that might be useful for mounting. And the tab uh, on the servo plate is sized to fit into the slot on the um, Arduino uh, mounting plate. So that could fit in several different orientations, but it might be a way to build a quick jig just to kind of hold a Arduino and servo in the same unit in a kind of mountable way. So that's kind of, uh, you know, some speculative parts for, you know, servos and, and the Arduino. That's a starting point. This disk part is, has a hole pattern in the center which is designed to fit a hub that will fit onto the uh, four millimeter shaft of the small gear motors. Those Palolo hubs are very useful for uh, coupling the sort of small diameter metal shaft out to a larger diameter um, such that a uh, wooden part can attach to it without just sort of breaking itself on the shaft. So the central hole pattern uh, fits both the shaft and some other, other screws that would fit into the hub. And then again, there's some speculative outer holes. It could be a wheel. It could be a way to mount a rotating part on the gear motor. It could be a, uh, the sort of core for some kind of like link drive. I'm not sure what you'll make of it. The breadboarding parts are designed for building structures. A couple things to note here is the kit includes some uh, small sheet metal screws. There's blunt self-tapping sheet metal screws. And some of the holes on, on the breadboards are designed to be a tight fit on these screws such that if they're driven into the hole, they'll self-tap and make a strong connection. Um, the grid is all 25 millimeter base, so there should be some ways to overlap parts and connect things together to build structures that way. They also include a variety of tabs. They're all the same size tab at the same distance. So these other sort of side parts can be press fit uh, tabs into slots to make uh, right angle structures. Um, and several are provided so you could build a full box if you uh, used all those parts. There's a variety of holes on these. These, these two side things are actually slightly different. Um, you'll note that one has a hole pattern for a uh, the gear motor. Um, due to some last minute gear motor changes, there are actually several of these parts with several different hole patterns aligned. Um, any individual part may not match the gear motors you actually have. You're going to have to figure out which one is the best fit. Um, and then there's another one that has just some sort of bushing press fit holes that could accept either a shoulder screw or a bushing around a shoulder screw or a larger hole for a ball bearing. So again, these are provided in a sort of speculative way. I don't know exactly how you're going to use them or if, if, if they're even going to solve a problem for you. But they're all examples of kind of reasonable flat pack design involving kind of building out structures from parts and then using bearings. Let's look at an example, a specific example. I've used, an, I've used here now uh, a couple of the, uh, the narrow breadboard and a couple of the side tapped parts. Uh, this particular version here has a motor pattern in the center. 
Um, and then I've shown a way to provide a couple of bearing structures. Um, the, the larger ball bearings are not a tight fit in the holes. There might be, you might need to shim that little bit of, of paper or metal foil or something, or even glue, just a very tiny amount of glue, just to keep the ball bearings in place. But here we have a shaft that's pivoting on a pair of ball bearings that are uh, basically just sort of fit into the wall of the, of the side tab there. And that provides a really nice, robust contact. Uh, any loads on the shaft here uh, could be either from the inside as a, or, or on the outside as a, uh, using this is this a clevis the matters on the inside or using it as kind of cantilever support if it's on the outside. And that uh, shaft can spin now very uh, low friction, uh, could spin very fast, and uh, has good support. Here we have a different structure where I've actually press fit the bushings into the smaller holes. And here it's a little more complete. I've used some uh, washers to sort of space out the interior. And with this structure here, the shaft um, can sort of freely spin uh, inside those bushings that you can see are kind of press fit into the wood. You can see a little cylinder there is the edge of the bushing uh, press fit into the smaller holes. So that is a way to build a, a nicely supported shaft uh, using the kind of wooden structure to support the bushings um, at some spacing on the, on the shoulder screw as a shaft. Um, and then the other washers and nuts are there to try to provide, um, just sort of constrain the axial motion a little bit. Um, and there's a lot of room for improvement in this, of course, but um, that's a starting point. Um, this could fit on the top to actually close the box, uh, and then you would have a complete box structure around a set of shafts. Um, these tab fits, I'm just kind of footing together by hand here, but uh, typically uh, they're designed with a very subtle interference fit, and then gently hammering them or uh, gently tapping them with a rubber mallet or something can assemble them. Um, if need be, a tiny bit of glue can hold them permanently. So there you have some representational wooden parts. They're really as much a design example as anything. They're designed to show that using tabs and slots, you can build right angle features. Using uh, holes that are uh, undersized meant for the uh, self-tapping screws, you can screw things directly into the wood. Um, using somewhat larger holes, you can uh, fit bearings and bushings in. Ideally, the fits would be fine-tuned so that the bushings would fit in with a gentle press and stay in place easily. Um, but that's sort of a refinement that normally happens when one's customizing a full machine design. So I hope that you find these parts useful, or if not, um, you'll have to improvise something uh, using your own materials.